What's going on guys? Vic VB back with a Game Case Arcades video. On this one today we're going to go in full force, full detail. I'm going to talk your ear off about my newly upgraded The Simpsons Virtual Pinball Party 2.0. I've seen this section of my Battle Station game room go through many different versions, but I think I could officially call it. This is how a virtual pinball machine should be. Let's take a look. Ow. Ha ha. <laughs> you know the drill, the whole social media plugin. If you're not following me on all the socials, what are you waiting for? Be sure to follow me at Vic underscore VP. Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, the live streams. You would see everything in the heat of the moment. That is the best part. Whether I'm working in the garage, upgrading, building stuff, whether I'm out and about, if I see something arcade game related, I just went to an arcade auction, you could have seen that if you were following me. So what are you waiting for? Be sure to also like and subscribe. If I said that correctly, you should have seen like the subscribe button illuminate with a little animation below this video. Yes, be sure to like and subscribe. What are you waiting for? Go, follow, yes, social media, do it. <laughs> Now enough of the social media plug, I'm going to do what I usually do best and that is talk your ear off. That is why I have an overview video and then I have these full detail videos. So be sure to grab something to eat if you want to get something to drink, sip on, whatever. I have a lot to discuss. Uh, I'm going to, there's, there's, there's so much to discuss. Um, we're going to talk about the actual cabinet itself. There's a little background to the actual wood that I used on this. We're gonna be talking about the upgrades and all that, so if you haven't seen the overview video, I definitely highly suggest you go watch that and then watch this one, because I kind of went like with the main details on that. But on this video, I'll go over a little bit of the overview, I'll talk about my machine and all that, and I'll talk about you know a couple of different add-ons and a couple of different experiences, such as me trying to get rid of my old cabinet. Man, what a challenge that was. Just, just get ready, stay tuned. I think the best way to start is that we're gonna talk about what I previously had, not what I had three years ago, not my first build. That you can see in the overview video. I'll talk about what I had before this and then what I have now. We'll keep it short and sweet. Before this, I was running a 50 inch QNED 4K 120 hertz display. I still am running a 32 inch back glass and I'm still running a 22 inch DMD. I had my DOF setup. I had my solenoids, I had my beacons, my strobes, my RGB flashers are what I use, which are police flashers. So I have actually police strobes. And then I have like this police red and blue flasher. So that's my RGB flasher. If you take a look at my Star Trek build that I did a while back, that had a true RGB five channel flasher where it's an LED puck that just, you know, will go with red and green and blue. That's the real way to do RGB flashes. But in my instance, I used police flashes. It just kept things simple. I still have my surround sound force feedback. I have my underglow, so the regular LEDs and all that. I was running a Z533. I still am running a Z533 as far as the 2.1 uh, sound system. Before I had the subwoofer still in its original enclosure. Now that is all gone. Um, that's the basics of how it started. Now, currently running, I do now have a 42 inch LG C3 OLED. I still have my 32 inch back glass. I still have my 22 inch DMD. I still have all the DOP and such that I mentioned before, but the add-ons now, I do have my RGB flippers and magna saves. I do now have also the addressable LED. So I have LED matrix on the top, the side rails and my LED speakers here. So all adjustable LED out. I did that for my past customers. I said, why not? I will do it for mine because now I'm getting a lot of the requests for the adjustable LEDs. And other add-ons, I do have also the shaker motor. I added a shaker motor on it. I was hesitant to add it, but I am happy that I did add it. And I do have the kind of controller knob in the rear for that. Um, other than that, actually big, big, big add-on. I do now have my custom side rails and custom lockdown bar. Again, shout out Eric, Big E Productions. He is the metal guy. I now have true, correct, side rails and lockdown bar. And I do have real glass. I didn't do tempered glass for like what I normally do for my customers. I went with regular glass because it was a price difference, but all in all, yes, 
glass and the side rails and lockdown bar. Now, as you can see, I am in my battle station. I have all the arcade cabinets on, which honestly, it rarely happens. Uh, you know, when I'm, you know, once I put the kid down and I'm able to just kind of relax and game, I'm the type where I kind of like know what I want to play, so I just have to load up one machine to play that game. The only time you've ever really seen these fully on, like in this video, is if I want to show off a little bit on video or if I have family over. So, for example, we just had the Super Bowl. I have family over, people come down, play games and all that, so I have all this, but in all brutal honesty, it is very rare that they're fully on. Again, me, I'm the type, even when it comes to multi-cades, I'm the type of person where like, I kind of know what I want to play, so I just play that one game. Uh, you know, when it comes to, like, to family playing, you know, it's like, hey, does this have NBA Jam pages? And then you kind of swap, I, that's, I've mentioned it many times in the past, if you have family over, I only have one game on and that's it. I actually remove the exit micro switches on my cabinet so nobody could accidentally exit out. But what I'm trying to get at with this is that, in all honesty, the probably the most biggest game slash cabinet that is played, I mean, especially for me, because it's just me mostly here and then the wife and the kid will come down, is my V-Pin. <laughs> That's really honestly why the V-Pin has gone through so many changes. All the other cabinets here have been like stock. I mean, luckily my Bivik 4-player 55-inch cabinet is with a great PC. It's got 43 terabytes in it. I have everything. That's kind of like a set and done. The only thing I would probably ever upgrade is like, you know, later on, let's say five or six years ago, new graphics cards come out. I might just change the PC out of that. But everything else, you got your Switch cabinet, so there's a Nintendo Switch in this one. I have my Neo Geo running a Raspberry Pi. That right there is awesome because, again, it's just Raspberry Pi. Uh, and if I, I do have a Neo Geo specific game list. So right now that is showing off only Neo Geo, but that still has also 15,000 games on it. So I'm basically set. But the V-Pin, shockingly, has gone through so many versions. Um, it is probably, I would, I would probably say it, it is, it's probably the most expensive thing here. <laughs> is it? Yeah, by the, by the amount of like changes I've done with it, yeah. I had a PC in this before, I had to swap out the entire PC. I had a cheap like $250, $300 Samsung 50 inch basic 60 hertz screen. That then I went and bought a QNED, it was like 600 bucks. Now I got a 42 inch C3. It's, it's gone through a lot. The only thing is I don't wanna really shoot myself in the foot and say is it the most expensive because honestly a Bivik 43 terabyte complete build like my buddy Project Canada, that is right now the most expensive build to date. So the V-Pin, it's, it's a close second. <laughs> now in all honesty, take that as a positive. Well, take a positive, you're spending money. Honestly, I play this thing a lot. I should, I don't wanna use this word and I'm, it's, gonna, you're gonna, it's gonna lead to this part of the video, but um, I'm almost hesitant to say I played this thing a lot. I used to play this thing a lot. Basically, it makes it sound like past tense. It kinda makes it sound like I am no longer playing it. Again, I'm, I'm trying to stay on track with this video, but basically there, there was a point, kind of also leads to why I did this upgrade. There was a point, I would say about six to seven months ago, when I no longer was enjoying my V-Pin. That's probably the best way to say it. I was not enjoying my V-Pin like I used to, like when I originally built it. Um, you might be saying, why, Vic? I don't understand, why, why? Well, if you don't watch my videos and if you go back about six, seven months ago, you would see a big purchase that I, I got myself for my birthday, for my 33rd birthday. It's kind of crazy because I built, I got this, I built my original V-Pin when I was 30. Now, three years later, I, I bought more toys. Uh, and basically, long story short, I bought two real Jersey Jack pinball machines. And in all honesty, once I got those things, Number one, they are amazing. They are expensive, but they are amazing. I am talking about every day. I play those things every day. I have this thing where like, okay, I'm gonna eat dinner. While the kiddo is like kind of calm down, I'll give her a tablet, I'll play, you know, a couple of games of Godfather, play a couple of games of Toy Story, and then it's bath time. So it's, it's been amazing. It has been a, it's, it's been an expensive hobby, but I will say that those cabinets right there, man, they get enjoyed a lot, they get played a lot. Then not to mention, like I mentioned, my, you could just go watch my, 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 my Jersey Jack videos. 
it's great to see the kiddo and the wife play those. <laughs> now, before I get to that part of the story, I actually want to talk about this. I want to talk about the actual cabinet itself because I have a very unique situation slash story about the actual wood, the wood part of this. Vic, what? What are you talking about? It's kind of crazy how like history repeats itself. If you go back on my videos, there was a time when I was building three V pins at once. Fast forward now, I'm doing three V pins at once. So that's what I mean by history repeating itself. Vic, what? what? If you look very carefully again, the a, a while back I was building three V pins, and it's actually very funny because if you are a real viewer and a subscriber, you would see two of those three V pins got completed slash got their whole promo overview and full detail video. And you might be saying, Vic, what, what happened to that, to that third one? We're gonna get to that right now. So yes, if you go back on my videos, I'm talking about the Hogwarts. When I built the Hogwarts and the Star Trek pin, there's actually a third pinball machine that I was making, a virtual pinball machine. There was a third one in the background. Still don't remember? I will show you this picture right here, which is also a picture on my website. You can see in this picture right here, Hogwarts is fully arted out. That, that build is done. The one to the left, the rear left that has the screen and I think it has the Sopranos on it, I'm not looking at it now. That right there is Star Trek. That's the 50 inch QNED Star Trek build I did. But if you look on the right, in the rear on the right, there is another V pin there. And if you really want to talk about it, if you are a, a viewer of mine, you would see that after you know those V pins aired and in the background of other builds, you would see that third V pin sitting there collecting dust. That's probably the best way to say it. There is a third V pin that really never got completed. Now keep in mind, while I tell you this story, I had no intentions of buying a real pinball machine. I didn't do this upgrade yet. This is, this is quite a while. I think it's almost a year ago since that Hogwarts pin has gone out. I'm not looking at the exact date right now, but let's just call it, it was about a year ago. So if you think about it for about a year, um, I had a third V pin in the garage, number one taking up space and number two was just collecting dust. Now you might be saying to yourself, Vic, I don't understand what happened. What, you know, why do you have a third V pin? This part of the story, I'll be honest, I'm going to, I'm going to tell it to you straight. You might think that I'm an asshole at the end of it. I really don't care. In the end, business is business. Keep that in mind. Business is business. So without further ado, let's talk about that third V pin. In the heat of the moment, again, if you've ever been a customer of mine or have inquired about a build from me, I do mention that I do have a wait list. I don't let people cut my wait list. My wait list is what it is. You basically join my wait list. When it's your time, I hit you up. We go over some details. Usually that takes about a day or two. And then I need a 50% deposit to even start your build. Meaning I have to go out and buy the wood. I gotta buy material, I gotta buy I have to buy stuff to make your build. Without a deposit, there is no build. That's the easiest, that's business. That's how it is. I don't have a thousand sheets of four by eight laminated birch sitting in the garage, no. When it's time to build, that is when I buy all of my material. I don't have enough space either for stock. Uh, you know, some people think I have like 500 joysticks in a box, I'm like no. I order everything made to order. Everything is custom built and made to order. That's how I operate. Now, coincidentally, yes, I had three V pins back to back to back, which is great. Again, you got the Star Trek, you got the Project Canada's Hogwarts, and then you have this third V pin. It was, it's, it's great because I was able to CNC cut three V pins back to back to back. And not to mention lay, build them and such. It took me about a week to CNC all three, and then another week to like, you know, build the frame out. Uh, whereas like, you know, normally if I'm building like an arcade cabinet, uh, you know, an arcade cabinet is built differently than a V-pin. So you might be understanding what I'm saying, but yes, coincidentally, I had three V-pins. Now, um, the hard thing in this situation is that the third V-pin was supposed to go to a cousin of a previous customer of mine. Um, long story short, this previous customer of mine came to pick up his arcade cabinet. When he came to pick it up, he bought his cousin. And you know, the cousin wanted an arcade cabinet. He also wanted to check out a couple of things. He never saw a V-pin. He came down, he played my V-pin. It was like, hey, I want a V-pin. So cool, do the basics, join the waitlist and such. Now your time is here. 50% deposit received. 
Now, in all honesty, that V pin, when it comes time, I kind of add some basic details, like what are you interested in, what are you looking for, what is the theme you want, and such. He wanted a 50 inch, just like what I had in my basement. He goes, Vic, I want what you have. I said, okay, cool, you're looking at a 32 inch back glass, 50 inch QNED screen. If you want, I no longer really do the 22 inch DMDs. Now we're looking at the 17 inch. He goes, okay, that's great. Basic stuff. His theme that he wanted was Marvel themes. He wanted a Marvel themed cabinet, so that's cool. I could either start looking for some artwork or I would get a designer involved and such. It's just, it's just basic stuff. But the biggest thing is that this 50% deposit at least covers the material needed. What I need doesn't complete, it doesn't cover the total cost of everything. Keep that in mind. So 50% deposit received. I then go and I build and I buy all the stuff. Yes, I buy many, many, many stuff. The solenoids, the wires, the same smart board, the analog plunger, the shaker motor, the screens. There's, there's a lot going on uh, when it comes to that deposit. Just keep that in mind. That's why I, I just want to emphasize it because this is where some of you might think I'm an asshole, but I'll, later on you'll, you'll figure it out. Basically, I built the cabinet. I wired this cabinet. I bought everything I needed for this cabinet minus the TV and minus the PC. Honestly, because those things are the last things I need. I already had a 50 inch QNED, so I already knew the measurements I needed. I don't need to go out and buy a TV because I already have one to measure out. Not to mention that it also helps you out as a customer. I try to find a sale. Why am I going to go buy a TV right now? Maybe it goes on sale and such. Not to mention it takes up space and it's also a hazard, meaning I might bump into it and it might fall over in my garage and such. So that's usually the last thing. When it comes to V pins, everything that's wired but the PC is the last thing that goes in because I don't want dust and all that inside my PCs. Do you get where I'm going with this? Basically this 50% deposit I got, I bought my material and I actually built the cabin. I even bought, because it was gonna be Marvel themed, I bought red legs, red pinball legs. Usually when it comes to pinball machines, V pins, I like to have them on their legs to work on. I don't like it when it's on a table. I don't have one of those like jacks and dollies. It's I have the legs on it, but then I usually, you know, tape up the leg and such. Long story short, now we're at the point for artwork. Artwork is a big deal. Um, you know, once I get the side panels down, I can make a template and I can work on art and all that. Not to mention artwork is artwork. It is your design slash vision. Um, basically, I hit up the customer. And I said, hey, man, it's time to do artwork. You know, what are you thinking about? What kind of characters do you want? And then he kind of drops the bomb on me and goes, hey, Vic, man, I'm so sorry, dude, but I can no longer fund this project. And, um, you know, it, it sucks to hear that, uh, you know, not, not in a business sense, you know, in a humane sense. It kind of sucks to hear that. But there's also like a procedure uh, to that. What do I mean by that? Basically, like I would text, I texted him. I said, "Hey, it's time for our work." And then I got ghosted for like a week. He didn't even reply to me. He, I even tried calling him. Nothing. I got nothing out of it. Maybe he was on vacation. That's fine. That's all cool. I then had to actually reach out to like the cousin. That's where it kind of hit a point. You know, in my eyes, for a week, when I don't hear anything for a week, maybe two weeks max, I start to like panic because um, you know I now have to pause my job and my work for two weeks. I can't cut cabinets when there is cabinets being made. And again, I was at a point where I'm getting ready to make artwork. If I cut a cabinet, there's dust in the air. If I get the vinyl, I understand I'm saying make artwork, I didn't you know, print the artwork. There's, there's basically a stop. Whenever I'm doing a build like this, there's a stop. I can't cut wood. I don't want wood and dust going into like the same smart, I, it doesn't work that way. Luckily, I don't have the PC either in it. So it's like, you get, you get my point. Uh, but basically, you know, the guy said to me, Vic, I'm sorry, man, I, I can't fund this project anymore. And, um, you know, now I have, uh, I got a paperweight now. Not a paperweight, but I just have this thing now where this is going to be the part where people might think I'm an asshole, but this is business. Um, whenever it comes to, like, wiring and all that, people think it's, like, a day or two. No, wiring for a V-pin takes me about, I would say, two to three weeks. Oh man, that's a long time. There's a lot of wiring. Stay tuned, I'm gonna be making a whole video, a whole new updated video on how to build a V-pin. There's a lot of wiring going on on this. So, you know, this is the part where some people might think I'm an asshole, but basically right now, I, you know, luckily he didn't ask for it, but you lost your money. That's it. I can't store this. And as you can see, I had to store slash keep this cabinet in the back. 
and it takes up space. And uh, that's basically the story on it. <laughs> basically, the guy no longer could fund it. Um, you know, no hard feelings, but now, you know, some people might go like, oh, Vic, man, that's not really fair. You know, maybe maybe if he has funds in like six or six months to a year, maybe you could continue it. No, it is gone. That's gone. This right now, I could, I, I, I have to now like work with the parts. And uh, it is what it is. Oh, Vic, you could probably, you know, use the parts for another build and give that person a discount. No, I don't do that. That's just not how things work. Cause then this, I don't, I don't deal with that. Um, you know, again, going back to what you might be thinking, Hey Vic, he might come back in a year. I have to hold this thing for a year. I have no space for that. I need to build and out, build and out. I have to kind of, you know, finish up my wait list and stuff. This is like I said, where some people are going to think I'm an asshole. This is business. This is how it is. I already put my time into it. I already bought the material for it. Now you might be saying, Hey Vic, maybe you could you know, maybe somebody wants that V pin. I actually did have somebody that wanted a 50 inch QNED built and I kind of messaged him. I said, Hey, are you it, basically, he didn't have the funds for it. It was supposed to be a Batman build. Uh, he didn't have the funds yet for it. Yeah. That's the big thing I want to say is he didn't have the funds yet. So right now, and, and you could see it in my past videos, this cabinet was sitting in the back for no joke, six months to probably a year. I don't know. I don't really remember, but basically it was, it was in the way. It got to a point when it was in the way. Now, like I said, you might think I'm an asshole. You might even have some other theories like, Hey Vic, you know, he already paid you. Why don't you just give him the empty shell? Give him what he paid for. I offered that. And the guy said, Vic, there's no point. Why are you going to give me an empty? Like, why am I going to look at something that I can't even what? Like I said, you could take it as it is. You might even right now be saying, oh, you're lying. But what? I don't really give a shit. Uh, it is what it is. It's sad to see and sad to hear, but it is what it is. And all in all, it is business. This is how business is. I'm just happy I didn't buy the TV and I didn't buy the PC because in all honesty, I would have had to pay out of pocket for that. Basically, when I get the final payment, I would recuperate that fund. Uh, but again, it is what it is. Long story short, that's what it is. That is the history behind the actual wood on this cabinet. Now though, if you've been listening, that cabinet was built for a 50 inch QNED screen. This is a 42 inch screen. Basically, I mean, I'm gonna talk about it later on, but I had to unwire. I had to take everything. I had to de-gut what I put and redo it all. Now this whole part about this cabinet sitting in my garage, this whole backstory and all that, it's gonna, it's gonna, trust me, it's gonna blend in on why I did this upgrade. But let's announce the real big elephant in the room. The real true reason I did this upgrade was because of those two bad boys over there. Yes, I'm talking about my two real Jersey Jack pinball machines. I have to always say that real because I don't know, some people might think this is virtual. I don't get it, I don't know, but yes, these are two real Jersey Jack pinball machines. You're looking at the Godfather Collector's Edition and you're looking at a limited edition Toy Story 4. Before I got these, I was perfectly happy and fine with my V-Pin, but once I got these, it hit a point where I could no longer enjoy my V pin anymore. Now these pins right here just hit six months old and I'll be brutally honest. The past six months have been amazing. It's been, it's been amazing. Just these two games alone. A Godfather is still kicking my ass. Uh, Toy Story had a great run with it. I love Toy Story. I'm always trying to get the grand champion. Godfather was a difficult game. It's it's literally kicking my ass, but that's what I love about the game. I mentioned in past videos that basically is the almost beginner level game, and then this one right here I consider an expert level. Um, all in all, both games are amazing. The wife and the kiddo loves Toy Story. I love both. My wife isn't really a big fan of Godfather, possibly because it's a little bit difficult, or it might be because of the violence on the game. Whatever. All in all, these two things, in all honesty, is probably the best thing I've ever purchased. It brings me a lot of joy and it also um it's also a bad thing because now I, I want more real pins <laughs> now you might be saying to yourself vic i don't understand how did these machines make you no longer enjoy your v pin is it because it's virtual pinball and it's not real pinball are you saying that real pinball is much better than a v pin yes and no <laughs> as far as like 
real pinball versus virtual pinball. It's actually very funny. On a live stream that I did maybe about a week or two ago, somebody mentioned there like, hey Vic, now that you own two real pinball machines, what's your view on virtual pinball? I'll be making a separate video talking about it, going in depth on it. Because in all honesty, the virtual pinball is amazing. It is great. It is also a big money saver. To make it like simpler or kind of quick and easy, I don't care how great spec your machine is. You could have the best spec screens and the best PCs and the best surround sound. And the best. In all brutal honesty, it will never beat a real pin. Slash, it will never beat a real pinball rolling around on the play field. So you just got to keep that in mind. Take that info with, take that with what you will, I guess you could say. But uh, stay tuned for that video. The V pin, it is great. I believe it is a must have because, in all honesty, these things are expensive. <laughs> Even the older titles. If I wanted a Simpsons pinball party in here in New York, I. Even, even an EM in New York, I cannot find any pinball machine that is under four grand. And that is one game. If you spend your money right, you got a great V pin, you could at least play the older style games, DMD era games. Somebody else said, hey Vic, do you ever think these tables are ever gonna come to V pin? I don't see it. And honestly, even if it did, I don't think I would enjoy it like I do a real pinball machine. Now to get back on track, these right here, these are standard body pins. Ever since like I saw the Godfather trailer, you could, get, you could see the videos of me talking about regular pinball machine. I am now hooked on pinball. You, you might be able to say like I'm addicted to pinball. Uh, I found a great local place, not really local, it's about, I think it's a 40 mile drive out. Um, it's a 20 mile drive out, I should say, it's a 40 minute drive out. Uh, pinball Long Island, I'm able to play over 80 tables experience the real versions of the v pin such as they do have a simpsons pinball party i actually went played the simpsons pinball party and i'm like wow this is great but i mentioned in a, in a past video that he, there was an there was an issue with the machine where the three drop targets that cover itchy and scratchy didn't work so you would easily get multi-ball there's a lot to it but basically luckily with the v pin i was able to experience the simpsons pinball party i was able to understand the code and try to you know aim for specific stuff to get a high score and such all in all these two machines right here have now it's it's the reason why i'm addicted to pinball <laughs> now again these are standard body pins my 50 inch qned i've made it a big deal in my past videos uh and i do feel like i'm gonna get flamed uh for it because you know three years ago i didn't i wasn't playing real pins basically what i'm getting at is that my v pin was five inches wider than a wide body pin. And I said in those videos, oh, five inches isn't a big deal. It's only two and a half inches on each side and all that. And in all honesty, now that I am a owner of real pinball machines, standard body, keep that in mind, these are standard body pins, and going to play pinball, such as in places like Pinball Long Island, majority, a very good, I would probably say 90% of pinball machines are based on standard body cabinets. There's a couple of wide body cabinets such as, uh, I believe, uh, Wizard of Oz and JJP's uh, um, Pirates of the Caribbean and even the Twilight Zone. Those are wide body cabinets. What am I getting at? These cabinets right here, lockdown edge to lockdown edge here, this right here is about 22 and a quarter inches wide. Now, when I went to my V-pin, I don't even remember the, the width on that, but basically it was just too wide. Honestly, I said it, it's kind of comically too wide. Me playing these for six months now, every day, nightly, just this right here, my posture here, my arms width here, I am so accustomed to it. Basically, after like the first two months, no joke, I haven't touched my V-pin for like two months. Played this, then it was, this is now the time when like 10.8 was getting, you know, friction. There's a lot of newer tables coming out. I actually went, I did an upgrade of 10.8. I downloaded a table. I even adjusted my V-pin. I had an issue with the nudge. I actually moved the KLZ board closer to the front of the cabinet. I did all those changes and I didn't even play my V-pin anymore because of the width of the cabinet. Yes, I'm going to say it. If you are the type that owns a real pinball machine and you're looking for a V-pin, 
and majority of your real pinball machines are standard body, I would not go bigger than a 42 inch screen. Could be the C3, it could be OLED. I love the OLED. Don't believe that hype of, oh, OLED, it's got burning. I have customers that have OLEDs for two years now and have yet or have heard any issues. Not to mention, technology changes. So figure in about two years, I might be swapping out that screen for a different Hertz screen, 120, whatever it is. The biggest thing, if you're only gonna be building a V-Pin and you have real pinball machines, you definitely wanna do a 42 inch screen. Definitely make sure that that has a 120 Hertz 4K display. I wouldn't go bigger than that. I would not go with a 48. A 40 inch, 48 inch screen is gonna replicate a wide body pin. And again, somebody, if you are watching this and you don't own a real pinball machine or you haven't had a lot of time playing real pinball machines, you could enjoy a 50 inch build like I did. I had the mentality of bigger is better. That was great. Three years ago was great and you could see in my videos, I enjoyed the hell out of my 50 inch screen. But once I got this here, once I started playing real pins, literally, and it sounds weird, but it is facts. I couldn't enjoy it anymore because it was just, uh, it's like muscle memory. I couldn't even nudge. This is like different, I could play this. But I no joke went, I adjusted my V-pin, I made it like so I could nudge better. And I literally just turned it off and I said, yeah, no, this isn't for me anymore. Now, as I mentioned before, those Jersey Jack pinball machines, those are 22 and a quarter to about 22 and a half inches wide. My cabinet right here, 23 and a quarter wide. This right here, it feels awesome. This feels correct. Whereas before, it was just too, it was just, I, I'm, I know I'm, I'm repeating myself. It's just like I'm trying to, like I'm trying to hug something. Your arm placement, it, it literally was just uncomfortable. I, I couldn't enjoy it. Um, basically then, uh, I came to a point where I said, you know what? I have that empty cabinet in my garage taking up space. Why not take advantage and upgrade my V-Pin? So you see there, it came full circle. That cabinet that was sitting up in the garage collecting dust, I gutted it. I had to recut it. That right there, again, the cabinet was built for a 50 inch screen. I now had to actually cut the front, make it more narrow. Even the back box I had to recut because my 22 inch DMD is a little bit taller than my standard 17s that I built. There's, there was a lot, there is a lot. So basically I jumped on and I said, you know what, instead of this being in the way, being a paperweight, I basically disassembled it, unwired it. That was another, Big thing, I, I unwired, I took all the wires out of it. I had to make it flat. I had to take off the battens that hold. A lot of work was done. So basically it was going back to step one. At least I was able to salvage the wood. But again, it basically took time. It, it took me another two to three weeks just to cut, rewire it and such. Now, keep in mind, I used all of the guts from my original 50 inch cabinet. I used the same solenoids. I almost, I, not all of it, but I used some of the wires. I used the same power supplies. I used the same Sane Smart Board. I unscrewed, desoldered the RGB flashers, the strobe lights, everything here, it's from my old cabinet. Now, real quick, as we're talking about my old cabinet, you will not believe how difficult it was to get rid of my old cabinet. If you're the type right now, you're gonna be buying a V-Pin, with intentions to sell it later on, I'm gonna tell you right now, you will not get anywhere close to what you spent on it. That's just my experience, you will not. <laughs> now you gotta keep in mind, let's try to keep the story going. I got my real pins, I couldn't play this pin anymore, I had an empty cabinet there. I said, you know what, I'm gonna cut that cabinet. I'm gonna make a 42 inch OLED build so that it is close to my standard body cabinets, but, I have to do something with this original 50 inch cab. What am I gonna do? I went, I took pictures, I made videos, and I went to the virtual pinball builders group on Facebook Marketplace. And it's just kind of sad that you will get flamed. No matter what, you will get flamed. People will make fun of you, people will mock you, people, 
People have no heart. It's kind of disgusting. It's really sad that we are all in the same hobby. We are all having fun. But when it comes to people's builds, you got to knock it. You must knock it. You must have... Uh, it's, it's so sad. It's so pathetic. Basically, what am I getting at? I posted, and this is the big thing they have to understand. I knew I was going to use all of my guts because I already have it. Why am I going to buy new guts? Not to mention, I have my Siemens contactors. The Siemens contactors, they're expensive now. I still have mine. I actually, I went and I put them. Oh, Vic, I thought you had the contact. I do. I still have those contactors up there, but they're not Siemens. I use the same exact stuff. I went on Facebook and I posted a video of my cabinet. And the biggest thing I said on my video, I said, I am selling just the body and the 50 inch QNED. And I put it there for 600 bucks. Now again, keep in mind, my original cabinet was MDF. It wasn't that greatly built. Basically, I wanted to at least get the money back for the TV that I paid for. Then you get, like I said, you get the assholes. Oh, I could, I could buy a new QNED for 600 bucks. Okay, but what about the cabinet? You don't have a cabinet. Oh, the cabinet is useless to me. So I'm like, why even comment? Basically, it turned like for a week, just people like, you had one guy, why don't you sell everything? You should sell it complete, you'll sell it faster. And I'm like, I'm looking to keep everything. I don't need to sell everything. I already have, I'm, I'm redoing my cabinet. Oh, you should, you know, how much if you sold it with everything? And then I gave a price and like, oh, that's outrageous. So why fucking ask? <laughs> Basically, after a week of just getting bleh, vomit of hate, I took the ad down and I said, you know what? I'm just going to sell the cabinet alone. I could use my, I could use that 50 inch anywhere. I could put it for the kiddos or whatever. I'll, I'll keep the TV. I put like the cabinet up and I said, you know what? I personally was not a fan of how it was built. It was built with MDF. It had no base. It, I just, it is what it is. I put the cabinet up for free. That was the extent. I had to put that cabinet up for free. Again, I'm not upset about it. I'm not upset that I basically, I honestly, somebody came to pick it up. Luckily, somebody came to pick it up. No joke, for like four days, you know, everybody's like, oh, would you ship it? Somebody said, would you ship it? I'm like, it's a free cabinet. You're gonna pay for shipping? I honestly wouldn't have even shipped it, but I said something, you're gonna pay for shipping? The guy's like, no. So what the, f what do you want? <laughs> so I, all in all, I'm happy to say that my original 50 inch MDF cabinet was given away, but, I'm not going to lie to you, you know, I don't want to say the word that was like pulling teeth. Uh, it basically hit a point when the guy got very lucky. It hit a point where I already cut my cabinet. I already wired everything. It was basically ready to come down here. So I basically was getting like artwork. Artwork was ordered when this cabinet left the door because there's no way. I, I have no room for a two cabinet. I basically, right when I was about to throw it out, Somebody's like, you know what? I will take it. I was no joke. I was going to put it on the side of the house, either put it on the curb, somebody will pick it up, or the garbage man was going to take it. But at least somebody took it. Now, it's great. The guy came, picked it up. He did tell me, he's like, Vic, I'll be honest. I'm not going to be keeping the same artwork. I'm going to be putting this in storage. Once I'm ready to build, I will then come back to it. I said, dude, I don't care what you do with it. I'm just happy that it didn't go to the garbage. That was the biggest thing. Now, also, yes, keep in mind, this vinyl is new vinyl. It is the same artwork. I actually honestly cleaned it up a little bit. I kind of uh, cleaned up the edges, especially on like uh, itchy and scratchy. Um, it is all new vinyl. I had the option was like, you know, do I want to keep the same artwork or do I want something different? And I'll be honest, I just had this thing where, you know, I never really get rid of my one of ones, my first ever build. I never get rid of it. But that MDF cabinet, I was, I was fine with letting it go. But at least I kept my same original artwork. I love my artwork. I'm, I'm a fan of The Simpsons. I should say I was, I was a fan of The Simpsons. I haven't watched it recently. It is nostalgia. It is no joke. When it was dinner time in my house, when I was like younger, Simpsons was on. It was, that's how it was. Fox 5 doesn't even air Simpsons. I don't think so. That's just nostalgia to me. And I love how my artwork is. So yes, I could not take off the vinyl from that MDF cabinet. MDF cabinets I will never cut. Ever since I cut that pinball machine, that was my first ever cabinet cut and it was MDF, I said to myself, I was like, I will never do it again. That thing was built like a tank. It was heavy. It's just heavy. That's what I mean. Uh, but finally, somebody came to pick up my old cabinet. And like I said, what I mentioned before, you won't get what you paid for on it. 
definitely don't even resort to like Facebook groups to try to sell these things because you know everybody is smarter than you. Everybody knows more than you, so you get what it is. It's just kind of sad. Uh, you know, you get flamed. <laughs> Now we can just talk about my newly upgraded pin. Before that, let's just kind of reiterate. I did this upgrade because I could no longer enjoy the 50 inch. It was just too wide. Having two brand new Jersey Jack Pinball Machine standard body cabinets, it's just, it's a night and day difference as far as no joke arm width. It's, it's a big deal. When I was building this out, I said to myself, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna try to do these LED addressables. People like them. There are newer features coming out with the adjustable LEDs. So I said, let me add it. Uh, the biggest thing when I was building this though, I was like, I need to get this cabinet width as close as possible to my real machines. Because if I cannot do that, this will not be enjoyable. Basically, right now how this sits, this is the closest you're gonna get especially with the addressable LEDs on the side rails. Now keep in mind, I don't know exactly off the top of my head what the size, if you go to Best Buy, you look up the 42 inch C3 OLED, it'll tell you the height. You need to see the height. That's the, really the width, is the height on it. I only added a quarter of an inch to that original screen size because the sensor bar on the bottom of the screen, I have to also add and take account for the opposite side. This way the screen is centered. And luckily the LED rails cover that sensor bar. So in all honesty, this right here, 23 and a quarter is probably the closest you are going to get, especially with a 42 inch screen. I'm not the type that's gonna go and route the edge. This way the screen could sit more flat. I'm not doing that. That is just, that's extra work. Not to mention like God forbid something happens with the screen, don't. Just, just I, I mean, if you do it cool, but I'm not a fan, I wasn't gonna do that. But all in all, now this is awesome. And not to mention I could even more enjoy this cabinet because I have the correct lockdown bar and side rails. Again, shout out Eric, Big E Productions. My previous build, I had these 90 degree L channels, chrome from like Home Depot. I rounded the corners out, but it's kind of different now that when you get an actual machine guy, metal guy, to do a very nice lockdown bar, awesome. And again, Big E Productions, Eric, I told him the dimensions. I told him the length over the glass, the length over the artwork, the lockdown bar over the glass. It's, it's awesome and it's, it's honestly a very much needed add-on is the lockdown bar and the side rails. Now the biggest thing when I was building this, I have in the rear, I have my uh, Solaroid switch and I have my addressable LED switch. Before I used to have a switch that killed the entire Saint Smart board. So it would knock out my beacons, my strobes, uh, everything, solenoids and all, except for the um, LED underglow. Uh, now I basically just have it turning off the solenoid. Having a three-year-old and me, I'm able to play my games, enjoy them without like, you know, anybody around or bothering me. I play them at night. These things are loud. And yes, real pinball machines are loud as well. The Godfather has this topper knocker thing. I have to turn that off at night because it is loud as hell. So again, I do have my, sol my solenoid switch and I have the switch for the adjustable LEDs. All in all, and again, I built four customers 50 inch cabs. They are great. I did great. I love my 50 inch cab, but if you're the type that has a real pinball machine, they're not wide body pins, you're gonna, you're gonna most likely want a 42 inch cabinet. I would definitely say this right here this is, this, is, this is a virtual pinball machine. This is what they should look like. My only adjustment is I wouldn't be doing a 22 inch DMD um, again. It's very, it's, it's great. I, I could do it. If you want me to, I will do it, but the back box is gonna be bigger slash taller. And like I mentioned in my overview video, I kind of have a height thing, so I couldn't really get it too tall. I just got it to work. Basically, this right here is a, is a DMD panel. This is actually wood CNC cut out, but it's very, um, there's no meat on it. My wood is three quarter inch, but basically with all the cuts, I basically bring it down to about an eighth of an inch. Uh, so I'm not gonna say the word flimsy because it is in, it's not going nowhere, uh, but there's basically no meat uh, to it. But all in all, it's, it's great. I wouldn't do a 22 inch DMD for other customers. I usually do 17 inch. Somebody on Facebook was like, oh, I don't like the, the 22, it's, it's a hair too big. All right, do you bro. I love this screen. Not to mention newer games, Futurama, 
the you know there's a lot of now three screen D and D games. It's really utilizing that D and D screen, and in that instance, bigger was is better. Not to mention I could I could really see the D and D. <laughs> you really don't really look up too much when you're playing, but yes, you could see the D and D. Without further ado, we might as well play some games. Why not? We'll try to see what like the adjustables look like and stuff. So as you can see, adjustable all around, surround sound feedback, the 10 solenoids are there, and it is a thing of beauty. And again, the KLZ board in its correct spot, not to mention you could adjust the sensitivity and stuff, but tilting and nudging this thing now is a thing of beauty. I, I now can really fully enjoy the V-pin like it should. Love it. So I'm just gonna play real quick the Simpsons Data East. I know I'm playing the Data East version, not Simpsons Pinball Party. So many people saw that video and they're like, oh, the play field's dark. Even now you might be saying the play field's a little dark. Um, the Simpsons Pinball Party VPW did a great version, but it's like too yellow to my liking. So I have to adjust that. You could always do day and night sliders and all that. And then remember 10.8, introduce this whole layback and incline so you could always adjust that but i'm kind of just doing this to show off the solenoids and the addressable so again i have a switch that will turn off the addressable LED. so if you're not a fan of it you could turn it off and i do have a switch that you could turn off the solenoid so all in all awesome stuff i don't think i have another ball scratch and match this is basically game over on it i'm gonna launch a different table uh just to kind of show off the screen and stuff so i figure we'll load up some big buck hunter again every table is different this table for example like you have like luts so you could always adjust and cycle through if you want to do that you could also do day and night slider it's just kind of a process when you do the 10.8 i had it set to this one uh it is what it is again we're playing this on a bye week so real quick if i add some coins you can see my flat my strobe is here and i even have an rgb flasher here plexiglass here and the Z533 speakers here. I did decase the subwoofer, so that is all correct now versus how my original build was. But we'll play a quick game. Get an analog plunger, get that skill shot. There you go. All in all, pretty cool game. Uh, it's what's great with VPN. You could play the game before if you considered buying it. And again, the nudging is great. Also, this table is great with the uh, shaker. So shaker mode, though, isn't like addressable like my Jersey Jacks. Uh, you know, they kind of had different sequences and all that, whereas this is kind of just on and off. But shaker mode is a very cool feature. It's a great add-on. So let's try to hit this. There you go. Got the buck. The table shakes. And again, the nudging now is a thing of beauty honestly if you wanted to nudge i don't know if you could see that can you see it yeah you can so again if i nudge you can see that and i also have a danger and opportunity to tilt if i want so i'll just do it real quick if you want just so we'll kind of shake it up there's another danger and then you tilt it up again you could adjust the sensitivity on dangers and tilts uh it's virtual tilt bob i don't have a real tilt bob but all in all i love it also yes glass uh, I did go cheap on the glass. Usually my customers get like tempered glass. I saved a hundred bucks and I went with regular glass. Uh, it's a thing of beauty. Plexiglass I won't do ever again. It scratched easily when I, was, when I went to go clean it. All in all though, this is awesome. The biggest thing also, note, flush against the screen. I'm flush against the glass. I do have the TV, the L channel for the addressables, and then the glass. Same thing with the LED matrix in the rear. I haven't seen anybody really do that. I love it. And not to mention with the addressables off, it doesn't, it's not like, it doesn't look wrong. And the biggest thing I always mention it, you should always like cover your addressable LEDs. I don't like to see bare LED diodes, so you don't see that there. Uh, this I think has addressables, let's see. And steel shot, there you go. So you can see the adjustable LEDs now.
Just before we close the video, I'm gonna try this one more skill shot. I missed it. <laughs> Comic book eye skill shot is a, is a difficult one, but awesome, awesome stuff. In all honesty, I highly recommend the OLED. The OLED screen is a thing of beauty. You could hear my 10 solenoids going off. I think, oh, I just missed it. <laughs> but all in all, the V pin is finally done. I'm out of here, man. Is right, Bart. There, you guys have it. My, uh, you know, word vomit of my little background story as to why I upgraded my V pin. I'm hoping now I shouldn't have to do any more upgrades. Be sure to stay tuned. A lot of the live streams now. I have a whole new camera set up for live stream. We are just enjoying the V pin and such. Man, I love it, man. On that note, Vic VP Game Case Arcades. The V-Pin is back. Game on, my guys. Game on.